YouTube, this is Lobo. I'm doing a follow-up video on the uh, harvesting of choke cherries video I just uploaded. Uh, for this uh, demonstration here, I was just going to kind of talk about the usefulness of the gold pan, a little bit of the history of it. Um, when you're out in the field, if you're a mineral prospector or a rock hound or love somebody that is, um, you know that um, most of these really good places uh, are in the middle of nowhere. Uh, oftentimes you have to ditch your truck or your Jeep or your car and, and hike into it. And so you quickly realize and find out that you're only going to be able to pack out uh, stuff that you really need because you have to carry it in. And of the stuff you carry in, you want to try and find as many uses for it as possible so you have a comfortable stay without having to hike in so much. Uh, so there was a lot of food prep that occurs in the gold pans. Uh, back in the old days, the old timers with their metal pans, they would actually prepare and cook meals in it over a campfire. I uh, definitely wouldn't recommend it in one of these. Uh, these are plastic. Um, good for cereal, uh, good for any kind of dry food, uh, certainly. Uh, hold water is very useful as well. Uh, you always want to clean it before you food prep, and then you always want to clean it after the food prep uh, because the oils and residues that are on food products uh, will definitely interfere with your gold panning. Um, you want to make sure that there's no oils uh, at all. In fact, uh, dish soap is often useful when you're panning as well, while you're actually panning. Uh, so what you want to do, and this is here, it doesn't have to be choke cherries. In fact, on these, I committed some oopsies here. This is not ripe yet. Actually, what you want to be looking for is you want to be looking for a deep purple color on these. But what you would do, let's say these are uh, any type of bear, and you want to dry these out. You want to save these uh, when you're out in the field. Uh, one way you can do it, now it does take a few days to do it based upon where you're at. It could take up to four to five days depending on how much sun you have and what the humidity is. Uh, but if you got the time and you're, you're, you're out on the creek, and um, one way you can do it is actually using prospecting equipment. Of course, uh, I use this to, to gather these up. Now what I have here is I have a couple of classifiers. And you can see classifiers are uh, basically screens. Uh, this one here is an uh, 8 mesh. Uh, I believe it's an 8 mesh. It's a little bit dirty. Of course, you want to clean these out. This is just a demonstration. And then this here is a 20 mesh. Now, the 20 mesh is about the same size as the window screen in your house, which is designed to keep out bugs, and it'll work perfectly for this. So what, we're, what you would do essentially is, is you would put the berries, after they have been properly cleaned, of course, you would put the berries gross. Uh, my dog's been laying on these. Sorry, everybody. But anyway, you would basically take the berries, you would rinse them off really well, um, and this is going to be your drying platform. And then these classifiers will fit, and you get a decent seal on it here, at least enough that bugs won't get in, uh, by placing it in the pan. And it lifts it up off the ground, so it gets the air underneath it. And then you get your 20-inch classifier and simply put that over the top of it. And then you would lay that in uh, direct sunlight as, as much as possible. Uh, you'd probably want to pull it in at night uh, because you got the condensation and the dew develops and that would hinder the process. Um, there are uh, things to watch out for if you're doing this in the wild. Uh, first and foremost, if you're in bear country, you're going to want to take extra precautions if you even attempt this. Uh, because these little beauties here, man, you do not want to be between a bear and a bowl of choke cherries. Uh, these things are very nutritious, uh, high in antioxidants, protein. It's basically a superfood. Uh, the Lakota Nation uh, considers it to be sacred, uh, and they use it in sacred ceremonies because it is such a useful food. Um, whenever you're harvesting these guys here, uh, you can see, and this will be, be the same with a lot of berries, we'll talk about this for a second. Basically, you want to, uh, when you collect these, you want to mimic a deer, if possible. A nice, cute little deer with a soft mouth, because a deer doesn't want to get all the stem in there. And these berries that are designed to be eaten, so they go through the animal system and they come out the other side, because there's a seed in there, and they come out the other side in a nice big pile of fertilizer, and then we get a new tree. And so, generally, do your hand like so, and just rake it across there and you should be able to pull them off without harming the berry too much. Now with the choke cherry itself it doesn't much matter because really the best way to dry and prepare these is to make choke cherry patties um, which would involve basically again only using the ones that are a dark purple uh, getting those out of there and using these and after you clean them of course and you have a clean workstation uh, you would crush those up and make little patties uh, that'll certainly speed up the drying process um, Make them uh, like you would, I guess, basically like a hamburger patty, if you would, maybe a little bit smaller, about a quarter inch thick. Uh, crush them up, uh, form them into patties, and then you would place the patties on the screen. Uh, the patties, if you do them early enough in the morning, you could probably get it done in one day. Uh, generally, the dry time on that's going to be about 12 to 16 hours. Uh, but again, if you're in bear country, um, and I'm probably going to, I'm in bear country, and I'm probably going to attempt this out in the wild, I'll get different screens, of course. Window screens make the best. And set up wood and window screen, and you can make them a lot bigger. Um, 
Uh, if and when I do try this out there, more than likely what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, have to suspend it in the evening, um, maybe cover it so it doesn't get wet, cover it with a tarp, a small piece of tarp or, or what have you, uh, and suspend it from a branch, uh, do it about 15, 20 feet in the air away from the base of the tree. Um, but I don't know, I have to figure that out there. But anyway, this is basically you know another use for prospecting equipment as far as uh, food prep. You can certainly use it for straining. Because if you watch a lot of the, the really good prospecting videos, there's a lot of people that are actually using kitchen strainers for, for the uh, classifier. So anyway, I just wanted to kind of show you all that. Um, pretty much any kind of panel you uh, will do. Um, I don't even, this pan doesn't even have a maker's name on it. I kind of collect pans now. Um, but pretty much any pan will do. Um, you want, again, you want to make sure you use soap and water and clean those up. Uh, if you use it for food prep or, or anything, uh, of that nature before you pan in the creek. Um, the one pan I don't really uh, multitask with is my Garrett pan. Uh, my Garrett pan is my favorite pan and uh, it's strapped to my backpack right now and that's my sampling pan. So, but anyway, cool. Hope you liked it. Choke cherries, good stuff, man. Make you some wasana, pemmican bars, uh, make you a winter soup out of it. Thanks for watching.